This morning's prayer is about a thousand years old and was written by a wonderful German mystic and philosopher, Hildegard of Bingen. And then we will share a few moments of meditation and silence together, after which we will sing Spirit of Life, hymn 123 printed in your order of service. We will sing it first in English and then in Spanish. Dare to declare who you are. It is not far from the shores of silence to the boundaries of speech. The path is not long, but the way is deep. You must not only walk there, you must be prepared to leap. A Japanese term and philosophy that applies to today's service is kintsugi. It is a term used to describe the mending of broken pottery with golden lacquer to show the cracks rather than attempt to pretend they don't exist. To celebrate and show off the fractures as lines of golden beauty. In Perfection Without Perfection, Striving for a Better Self, Ryan Landis Gilman writes, Imperfection is simply part of being, and perfection is all about embracing our imperfection as we strive to naturally better ourselves. Just as Kintsugi, the golden lacquer, highlights the cracks in a piece of pottery rather than hides them, we should look at ourselves and the world at large and consider what we really want for the future. Here's another way that I'd explain this by using one of my small rhyming poems. Perfectly imperfect or just being me. How boring to be perfect, to get every answer right, already every question done, no mysteries in sight, to never learn and never grow, to only know what you know. How sad to never make mistakes or try again and fail, to just begin to practice it, throw in the towel and bail, then come back hungry to try and see the path, the reason why. How fun to be imperfect and have a chance to play at being just a human being who will never understand the way the universe unfolds its mystery, to shout out loud, hello, I'm here, it's me. From Leonard Cohen's song, Anthem. The birds they sang at break of day start again, I hear them say, don't dwell on what has passed away or what is yet to be. Ring the bells that can still ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That is how the light gets in. Ever since most of us were very young, we have been taught and trained to focus on our failings and judge them harshly, rather than having been taught to love ourselves as we are and use that as a platform for growth, self-confidence, and to value our self-health, our contributions to our community, and our ability to change the world in which we live by just being ourselves. In the small cabin called the Study Shack on an island in a large lake in down east Maine that I inhabit each summer, there is at the back of my head a window with a window box full of summer flowers. The cabin is where I write my annual sermon. Each day I hear a loud buzzing. It is a solitary hummingbird collecting nectar from the flowers. Its unexpected buzz is such a delight to hear that it always opens my heart. 
Nietzsche's unexpected surprises do that for me. They open my heart and create an immediate present moment. Guiding this year's three month sabbatical period put me in the Zen position of beginner's mind, an ongoing thread of immediate present moments. Like nature's unexpected surprises or the buzz of the hummingbird's visits, those moments opened my heart and I learned. I learned by making mistakes, just as I had as a child. And as a nearly 70 year old man, I found that it required me to honestly love myself just as I am, perfectly imperfect. Now, I do not even remember a time in my childhood when I was encouraged to learn to love myself. Such a notion crews too close to the sins of pride, vanity, self-righteousness, and having too big an ego for my Irish Catholic mother. So she reminded us not to get too big for our britches, or don't rest on your laurels, I expect you to do better than that. She was bringing up seven children, she came from poverty and wanted to launch us up onto the next rung of the social ladder. She believed that keeping us in line and self-effacing and self-judging was essential to that success. My father would take a different tack and tell me how proud he was of whatever I did, even when I failed, always followed by, that's okay, I know you can do better. <laughs> he was an ex-Marine, and although he was a janitor for multiple jobs throughout his married life, he always had a sense of quiet self-confidence and self-esteem, no matter how menial his job position was. He was a good model, but never did he encourage you should learn to love yourself. He, like my mom, wanted excellence from his kids. So I grew up, as many of us do, knowing that I was flawed and needed to focus my energies on fixing myself and doing better. My older brother and I were spanked for many years for coming home with anything less than an A or B on our report cards. Fortunately, I was both smart and clever and excelled at school, but much of that was about survival and learning to know what the teachers wanted from us and how to behave when under their scrutiny. But what I was learning through all of those years was the overriding fine art of constant self-judgment, or at least spending much of my life worrying about how others were viewing and judging who I was, what I did, and whether I was up to their standards. This did not apply any longer to just family and school. It extended itself to include friendships, relationships, and even simple daily interactions with store clerks or strangers on the subway. It was a quiet but deeply seated obsession of judging myself based on my guessing how the world judged me. There were, of course, islands of relief from the internal senator telling me that I could be and should do better. There were hours of relief in reading, in being outdoors in nature, being in love with life or another person, and countless hours making art. But I never began to learn to love myself just the way I am. Just the way I am, perfectly imperfect, without looking to improve, change, or readjust who I am to please others. That is, not until decades ago, when I ran into a quote from Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. <laughs> and something clicked. It wasn't just the witticism which I enjoyed. It was the lightning bolt of the absolute truth of that simple statement. 
I'd always known that we are each unique, but the encouragement to live that truth completely just never dawned on me consciously. It freed me in an inexplicable way. Suddenly being perfectly imperfect became a pleasure and not a burden, not an obstacle to surmount, but a path of growth and learning with freedom that I had not experienced in years. Be yourself, everyone else is already taken. I am in no way saying that trying to do our best is wrong-headed. We always need to try to learn, grow, and improve, both for our own well-being as individuals and for our community. In fact, that learning is what I want to talk about. But trying to be perfect and always right might just not be the best way to accomplish the goal. John Maxwell said, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Our own music director, Mary App, has often said something like, just sing. Don't worry about being perfect. Just sing and enjoy it. This instruction of Mary's has larger implications. Mary might agree with Kevin Wong when he says, the only people who don't make any mistakes are those who don't do anything. <laughs> Stephen Hawkins, and that man was a pretty careful thinker, once said, one of the basic rules of the universe is that nothing is perfect. Perfection simply doesn't exist. Without imperfection, neither you nor I would exist. If we accept his premise that nothing is perfect, perfection simply doesn't exist, then believing that what we are striving for is to be perfect is a futile endeavor. In fact, he is bold enough to suggest that without per imperfection, neither you nor I would exist. Thus, we are perfectly imperfect. I wonder when did we go from a time when we made a mistake and we thought, okay, let me try that again, to saying, oh, damn, I'm so damn stupid, what is wrong with me? When did we forget the interesting value of making mistakes? When did we start to pretend that we are separate from nature and that we alone are meant to be perfect and get it right all the time and then berate ourselves for our, our mistakes and imperfections? When did we forget, as Sue Fitzmaurice says, I'm not here to be small, to compare, to judge myself or you, to fit in, or to be perfect. I'm here to grow, to learn, to love, to be human. When did we decide that nature's beautiful habit of being imperfect and making countless mistakes is not just the way things are? And in de instead, decide to start calling evolution implying that nature has some perfect intention and chooses only the correct forward progress, as opposed to recognizing that accident and error provide random growth and wonderfully unexpected outcomes. If evolution is a plan to create perfection, and we as humans are one of the pinnacles of that plan, then why are we also one of the greatest threats that nature has had to face? As human beings, we carry two realities in conflict with each other. One is our belief that we can be perfect, and the other is our belief that we are failures in our own eyes and in the eyes of other when we fail to be always right and perfect. Neither reality acknowledges the universe as it is. The universe is not perfect, it is perfectly imperfect. 
There is a quote from one of the bakers on the Great British Baking Show that I love. <laughs> Sorry. I really got it wrong. We seem to forget that when, f when we first began to learn, we all... Sorry, let me try that again. We seem to forget that when we first began to learn, all we made were mistakes. In learning to talk, we muttered guttural sounds, trying and failing to make words, but happily chirping along and pointing and making name sounds. When learning to write, we scribbled. When learning to read, we spent hours and hours of mistakes and retries. And do you remember learning to read? Do you remember learning to ride a two-wheel bike? <laughs> the tries and the don't let goes. Learning how to steer, pedal, and balance the bike at the same time. There is a telephone pole on Aberdeen Road in Milton, Massachusetts that has the imprint of my face on it. <laughs> from my many crashes straight into it after whoever was pushing me let go. And after all those mistakes and because of them, once I learned to ride that bicycle, I loved riding it all the way across town summer after summer. And then as we became older and began to think we needed to be perfect and be right all the time, new learning slowly ground to a halt. It is only when we feel free to make mistakes and celebrate them that we are still growing and learning. Only when we learn to love ourselves just the way we are do we discover new possibilities and new solutions and rediscover ourselves. As Haley Steinfeld says, it needs to be said and heard that it's okay to be who you are. We lose so much spontaneity as we age and go through our lives that we must fight, and I truly mean fight, to find as many opportunities to still make as many mistakes as possible because that is how we as humans continue to grow and learn. Celebrate the fact that everyone else is taken and that you can only be yourself. Let us enjoy our not knowing the answer, our forgetfulness, our blunders, and our out-of-step responses. They are simply mistakes like those we made in our first attempts to read or write, and they prove that we are still alive and vital. They are the signals that we are still learning and growing, which is the very definition of being human. That we, like the universe that created us, are perfectly imperfect. Amen. Blessed be, and let it be so.